In this video, we're going to talk about the time that I painted a paint scheme that I hate and loathe and how I managed to salvage it. Okay. This video is brought to you by Six Squared Studios. Go check out the link in the description down below. See all their incredible MDF products, including movement trays and wound counters. Welcome more gamers, Doug here from 2 Plus Tough, and I do have a lot of new hobbyists coming to the channel. I, I know this through the comments, through emails, through Facebook messages, Instagram messages, lots of folks who are new to Age of Sigmar, sometimes new to hobby painting and things like that, or to the hobby aspect. And so this is a thing that happens quite a few times. Um, hasn't happened to me in a while, but basically, here's the story. If you watched my video a while ago, you know that I traded my Fire Slayers for an unpainted Iron Jaws army uh, from Jack from Rear Rolling Ones. And I was so excited about these Iron Jaws. I wanted an Orc army for a long time. I used to have Bone Splitters. That's a whole saga I went into that video on detail about. But I'm very excited to have a, an Orc army again. And I was like super pumped. I knew exactly what I wanted. I want this nice... Uh, kind of gritty looking blue paint scheme. They have a, a blue paint scheme in the Battle Tome with some cool artwork of Brutes uh, looking good with the, the white checkers and things like that on their shoulders. Absolutely stunning. Now, preface, here's, here's one of my critical mistakes. This is going to be both an educational video and kind of a rant for me. I paint armies a lot. I paint a lot of different kinds of armies and the way I do that is with batch painting and uh, using the Citadel paint app on my phone. And this project was going to be very similar in terms of uh, I have 30 Ard Boys, I'm going to crank them out. I decided to do all 30 in one go, which we'll talk about that in a second. But uh, also I wanted to use the GW McCrag Blue spray paint. And that's going to become very important here in a second. So I jumped right in using the tutorial they give you in the app. I started cranking out huge blocks of Ard Boys. I painted up 30. I did all the blue. Uh, the bone color, like on the tusks and the horns they have all over them, everything. It was red and blue, and then I looked at them and I thought, I hate this so much. As a sad note, I learned from this that I'm never batch painting in increments higher than 20 ever again, because when you decide that uh, you need to batch paint in a larger thing, like 30, 40, 50, even 60 if you're doing like Moon Clan Garotz, they can have those huge numbers. Uh, here's the thing, it's kind of like offering to help your friend move. The second the plan leaves your mouth, you're just like, oh god, what have I done? What have I signed up for? That's the same feeling you get when your paintbrush hits the first model when it's one of 60. And the thing is, I kept looking at them, and I'll throw pictures up here so you can kind of see my, my progress as I moved through this thing. Shout out to the rerolling ones. My friends, um, Mark, Jack, and Brent, we have a little group that we just chat with each other about what we're doing, how to coordinate games, stuff like that. Um, they were uber patient with me when I was trying to express like what I didn't like about them. They're trying to be encouraging and help, uh, but I just kept trying different things with the blue and hated every single one of them. And so then I started kind of scouring online, like other people have painted blue iron jaws before. How are they achieving something that looks different than mine? Because my art boys just kind of looked like these ugly blue blobs, not like they're wearing blue armor. The answer came when I stumbled upon a forum on the Grand Alliance forums. You should go check it out. It's like the biggest Age of Sigmar forum there is. Uh, someone was complaining because they bought a can of the spray paint of Avalorn Sunset, the yellow GW spray paint. And when they went to go put on actual from the pot Avalorn Sunset, it looked very different. Sure enough, pulling up my little GW app, um, I'm looking at the tutorial that uses McCrag Blue as the base. And I'm realizing that as I'm applying my highlight layers, just as the app directs me to, they are not substantially different from the base color. This means that the canned spray paint for McCrag Blue, mine at least, I don't, I'm sure they're not all like this, otherwise it would be a big deal, but um, it was about two shades brighter than the actual potted McCrag Blue which really throws things off when you're talking about shading. And as I'm looking at my models, it dawns on me that that is the problem. They don't look awful because blue is an awful color. They look awful because there's no uh, depth. They are blue blobs that have no highlights. There's nothing uh, shadowy about them. There's no like creases. There's tons of creases in the army like uh, from a modeling perspective, but I don't represent that with painting and color. And so they look static. They look very boring, very dull looking, because that depth is not there to add shadows to it. So rather than being a moron and doing all 30 like this at once again, I decided I'm gonna pick one dude and I'm gonna paint him in a different way, trying to salvage the blue because I don't wanna just 
strip them of all the paint because I did a lot of work on like the etching on the shoulder pads and the tusks and the eyes and all these things like that. Uh, I did great for the auric skin, also using the app. But uh, I wanted to salvage it, so I picked this one dude who was just a nobody. He had a, he had the skin, he had a lot of variety, so he seemed like a good test experiment. And I just painted him to completion to see kind of a test of theory. Here's what I did. And if you're in the same boat, this is how you can do it as well. I opened back up my Citadel painting app, uh, knowing fully well now that my actual color of my model is two shades brighter than it should be. I looked at the blue section and found a blue that more accurately matched uh, what my models currently were kind of working from a, a different starting point so i picked the light blue one which has kaldor sky uh shade of draconoff nightshade and a layer of techless blue gives you this nice radiant blue pattern here and so i said okay well i've my color what should have been my kind of extreme highlight now um kind of looks like kaldor sky so why don't I just wash the whole thing in Jack and Off Nightshade, use that as my starting point, build up with Techless Blue. They're going to be much brighter than I had personally envisioned, but they will look coherent. They'll have shadow and depth, and then actually it actually worked out being better because I'll put a picture up here. It looks better because it actually maintains that same bold pop that the yellow paint scheme offers. Again, they're supposed to be bright and loud and because you're supposed to want to fight them and notice them in a battle, and I think it actually maintains that. Combine the fact that I ditched the red as my secondary color. I looked at the painting wheel, and um, if you don't know, you should check this out. GW has a video that kind of explains the painting wheel as far as like contrasting complementary colors. I really do highly recommend it. Peachy goes into great detail, and they even have this little chart that shows you like all the different kinds of paints like by the GW names. And so opposite on the color wheel from blue if you don't know is orange rather than red and i thought well let's just try it tried a few different kinds of orange even put a little poll out to my buddies and got some good ideas basically i went for more of a, a bright you know uh, explosive blue and more of a dull orange so they contrast not only in color like across the color wheel but even in just their kind of visual noise then i learned something very else i'm going to kind of uh put all these learning experiences together towards the end, but I learned something else, and that is that at the second I moved away from the Ard Boys, because they were the only units that I had painted at this point, and I picked up a Mega Boss, did the exact same scheme on him, now much faster because I have kind of the system down of where to start, how to shade, that kind of stuff. I realized that he looks exceptional compared to the Ard Boys, and that's when I learned something else. Not all models in a range are the same with the same color scheme. If you look at the Iron Jaws line, you'll see the Brutes and the Mega Boss. Those are going to be my examples here. Um, they have a lot of texture. The armor is like dented and shredded in various places. Um, there's a lot more skin showing, so that green is going to be a stronger color. If you look at the Ard Boys, they are like 99% armor. And it's not just armor, it's like smooth armor. And so they are visually different with the same paint scheme where... This is something important to remember because if you look at other units like, say, Dryads compared to Kurnoth Hunters or Fire Slayers are basically all the same. They don't have to worry about this. But you know what I mean? Where there's factions that have units that are very visually different from one another that they don't necessarily take the same paint scheme the same way. The Brutes and the Mega Boss look stunning with this blue. The Ard Boys look passable. Point is, I would say, if you're doing test games, test it on one model from each unit. Don't just bulk do 30 like I did. It was a terrible idea. But then also try different models from across that range. See how the test scheme looks on them. It dawned on me this is probably why GW has like the color plates that show you what schemes look like. And there's always like multiple models in a faction for each color scheme. So to sum it all up, the things that I have learned from this experience that I want to pass on to newer painters. Uh, one is always pick just one model and do a test scheme. That was a huge mistake that I made. Uh, instead of doing the bulk 30 Ard Boys. On that note, I'm personally going to limit myself to a max of 20 when I do batch painting for sanity's sake. Uh, basically, when I figured out what I wanted them to look like, how to fix the dark, nasty blue that I had done, I repainted them in increments of 10. So I could like do 10, get them polished off, do a hero, do 10, do another hero. And so at this point, I have the Mega Boss, Weird Notch Shaman, all painted up, looking great. I'll throw some pictures up here of the various units that I have painted at the time of this recording. It's only like 600 points, but it is getting there. Next lesson is to not trust explicitly 
the GW spray paint cans. Always test them first, or if you are going to do that, you know, do say McCrag Blue, for example. I would say spray them with McCrag Blue and then go over with a very thin down actual from the pot McCrag Blue to make sure the tone is not too high. Lastly, remember that schemes look different on different types of models. They look much better on brutes that have a lot more texture to demonstrate the variations in colors and the edges and the textures. Uh, whereas on the Ard Boys, which are more smooth armor, uh, they kind of don't have that same effect. And the biggest thing I can do to help new painters who may be kind of uh, not super pumped about their paint scheme is simply to use your GW Citadel app. Whatever your models currently look like, find that on their paint by color system and then find a way to build up from there. And that has been the lifesaver for me where it's like, I have this color, what can I do from here? Building from that point instead of making myself restart all over again has been a huge life and time saver. Now, if you need more information about the Citadel app, um, go over. I'm gonna put the link to the description below of the video I did kind of reviewing it. It has expanded greatly since I did that video with more models and that that is completely free, requires no information from you. It's just a resource that's out there to support you. Hope this video has been beneficial to you. Uh, let me know in the comments down below uh, if there's something that you've painted that you're unsatisfied with how you recovered from it, how you plan to, and frankly, if you want some advice, you can always message me on Facebook. It's probably the best way to do it because Facebook like sends me tons of alerts about messages, and Instagram is also a good place for, if you want to discuss back and forth, options that you have for your army. Thank you all so much for watching, and happy wargaming.